first myth today asks if it's true that the Beach Boys album Pet Sounds actually got its name from an insult that Mike Love made to Brian Wilson. As one of the greatest and most influential albums ever made, there's actually a ton of debate as to how it got its sound, and the insult story is definitely one of them that has a lot of traction. Released in 1966, there are people who believe that when Love first heard the album, he said to Brian Wilson, who's gonna listen to this album? Dogs? And that's how it got its name. There are other claims that when the group was ready to send the album to the label, they still had no title for it, and they had taken a bunch of pictures in the zoo, so they said, well, let's just call it Pet Sounds. There's a bunch of those on the record also. However, there is a claim that the pictures were actually taken after the album name was made, so that takes that story away a little bit. It could still be a reference to everything you hear on the record. There's also another theory out there that the name is actually a veiled reference to producer Phil Spector, because the initials are the same. To be honest, there are about a dozen different claims as to how Pet Sounds got its name from different band members and people associated with the project. Mike Love says one thing, Brian Wilson says another thing, someone else says another thing, there's varying levels of credibility here, but nobody seems to have the same story. So while this battle goes on, you can pretty much pick your favorite, find some answers to it, and say, yeah, that's what I want to believe happened here. My next myth asked if it's true that the Guns N' Roses song, Sweet Child of Mine, was actually written about the daughter of one of the Everly brothers. Yep, that riff is in your head right now, and we all know every second of that song, but written about the daughter of an Everly brother? It sounds a bit suspect. This story, though, is totally true, because Axl Rose actually dated and was briefly married to Don Everly's daughter, Erin. Rose said many times that Sweet Child of Mine was written with her in mind and that he tried to channel Leonard Skinner to try and get that heartfelt sentiment, whatever that means. This is Axl Rose we're talking about here, so some things don't make sense to the rest of the world, but make sense to him. That's what the guy said. Leonard Skinner. Aaron Everly also appears in the video for Sweet Child of Mine. The two of them were briefly married, but were then divorced. So yeah, the sweet child in question is Don Everly's daughter. Rocket Queen, though? That's a totally different story. My last question asked if it's true that Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath is actually missing two fingers. Without question, one of the greatest guitar players ever. His riffs and progressions are what are the keys that make Black Sabbath the soundtrack to the lives of so many people. Me included. And yes, Tony Iommi is missing not one, but two fingertips and it all came from a factory accident when he was still a teenager. It was actually his last day of work at a sheet metal factory when he was about 17 and the accident caused him to lose the tips of two of his fingers on his right hand. Obviously, he saw the injury as a direct impact to his ability to play guitar and for a while he didn't think he ever would again. He was completely disheartened. Tony said that his boss at the time actually turned him on to Django Reinhardt, who had similar injuries and is one of the most iconic players ever. And he started using melted down thimbles to extend his fingers so that he could still play. Obviously, this completely changed changed the way he approached playing guitar, though he said he never even considered switching hands. The results are obviously nothing short of legendary, and the next time you're listening to Black Sabbath, just remember, those riffs, they come from somebody missing two fingers. So those are my myths for this week. Be sure to check back here every Friday as I delve into some of the coolest stories in music history. If you've got a myth you want me to answer, you can email it to me at thedailyguru at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here, and I'll see you guys again next time. Oh!